In this video, I'm going to go through and demonstrate the user interface controls that can be found in the Polaris library. This video focuses on the synth engine only, and if you'd like to learn more about the top menu, the preset bar, and also the main controls, please do see the video on the standard interface. So looking at the bottom half of the synth engine, we have three different views. We have the sound bays, we have the effects, and also the sequencer. Starting with the sound bays, sound bay A and sound bay B, both sounds are independent from one another, and all the controls on each side of the interface are identical but only affect the sound source they are under. Each sound source has a preset menu where you can filter the sounds, you can favourite that particular sound or also preview it. You can load a preset into the sound bay by double clicking or clicking and pressing the load button. Further on each individual sound bay there are four different controls. You have the speaker icon which operates as a mute button. We then have preset arrows which allow you to cycle through the presets within the filter system. We then have the unload button which removes the sound altogether from the sound bay. Moving down the interface we have three low frequency oscillators. We have one for volume, pitch and also filter. The frequency of the low frequency oscillator can be selected by clicking in the box and dragging upwards or downwards. The amount that the low frequency oscillator affects the sound bay is determined by the slider on the right hand side of each oscillator. Below the oscillator section we have the filters and envelope. The filters are generic high pass and low pass filters and the frequency cutoffs are determined by clicking and dragging in the boxes. The resonance at the cutoff point is determined by clicking and dragging the slider underneath the filter. The ADSR stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain and Release. The attack is how long it takes for the sound to fade in from zero. The decay time is how long it takes for the sound to decay from the peak level to the sustain level, which is set by the S control. The release control allows the user to set how long it takes for the sound to decay to zero after you've let go of the key. Below the filters we have the tune, pan, offset and trim controls. The tuning allows you to adjust the overall pitch of the sound source. The panning allows you to adjust the position in the stereo field. The offset control allows you to adjust the note range. So if you were to increase this to say seven, then you are now triggering the note that is seven notes above the one you're pressing. The trim control allows the user to set an overall level for this particular sound bay. You then have the glide option to the right, which has an on off switch. When the glide is enabled, the bend controls no longer become available and you can adjust the duration of the portamento by increasing the slider to the right. How much bend is applied is set by the slider on the left. This can also be thought of as the depth of the bend. The slider on the right adjusts how much pitch variation is applied. Now the clone control allows you to duplicate the signal that is in sound bay A and pitch it. So when active, the slider on the left allows you to choose which particular tone or semitone you wish to pitch the clone to. The slider on the right operates as a fine tuning control. At the very bottom of the synth engine we have the mixer which allows you to move between sound bay A and sound bay B. This traditionally is mapped to the modulation wheel. You can also control this automatically by using the oscillate mix function on the left hand side. When this is enabled the mixer will oscillate in time with your DAW. You can change the rate in which it oscillates by using the up and down arrows. The stop on release control will stop the oscillation of the mixer when you hit stop in your DAW. The controls to the right of the mixer allow you to change the wave shape in which the mixer is oscillating at and the control below it 
allows the user to change at which point in the wave cycle the oscillation starts at. Moving through the different views at the top of the synth engine, we can then see the effects. On the left hand side, we decide which part of the signal chain we wish to affect. For example, bay A and bay B operate as direct inserts on the two sound bays. This means, for example, if you wanted to, say, introduce the bias effect on bay B to sound bay A, you would need to reverse the synth engine around. If you'd like to learn more about each individual one of these effects, there is more information in the manual. We then have traditional auxiliary effects, or sends. These are called from the bay A and bay B effects pages, and need to be turned on. The aux effects are more traditional send based effects, for example delays and reverbs. The master effects are more traditional effects that are associated with mix bus processing, for example EQ, tape saturation, or maybe a limiter. You can also use auxiliary effects from the master effects page, and again these need to be enabled before you can hear them on the aux effects returns. Moving forward again, we then have the sequencer, which has an on off switch at its top. By clicking in each of the boxes, we can program the rhythm for each individual sound bay. We can then increase the length of the sequence by using the slider at the bottom and the speed of it on the left hand side. On the right hand side of the sequencer, we can also reverse the pattern between sound bay A and sound bay B. Below the sequencer, we have a depth control, and this is going to adjust how aggressive each individual step plays back. The smooth in control allows the user to place a gentle fade on the beginning of each step, and the smooth out control does the opposite by allowing you to place a fade on each step's release. The stop on release option allows the user to stop the sequencer recurring when you hit stop in your DAW. And the after layer effects control allows the user to place the sequencer after the effects, so the effects are also being sequenced. If you have any further questions about Polaris, please do get in touch with us at spitfireaudio.com forward slash support. Thanks for watching Spitfire Clips. Let us know if it was too long, too short, too fast, or too slow in the comments down below. Hit like if we answered your question and subscribe for more clips, tips, tricks and exclusive Spitfire content.